Thank you, Brook Hills Free Methodist Church. <laughs> I always enjoy coming here. Um, now, I have to be careful. Somebody's uh, videotaping this, aren't they? I guess I better be careful what I say. But sometimes the superintendent goes to certain places, and I'm not as welcome as I am here. <laughs> and so when I come here, I always enjoy it. Thank you for the privilege of coming to share the Word of God today. I remember a few years back when we were talking about what about the possibility of this facility and doing greater things to reach Brook County and beyond with the gospel message. And I remember being here, and we held the meeting and decided let's go for it, but there was some downtime in between, and they were talking, and I kind of slipped out into the old sanctuary, and uh, I don't remember what I said, but there was a piano sitting there. <laughs> and I said, kind of quiet in here. Remember, I went over and just started banging on it. Then you got the impression that I knew how to play the piano, and Pastor Don is right, I do not. I fake it as best I can. But you know what? I love music and how God speaks to our hearts. I appreciate with Brother Ken as he shared when we sing these songs, boy, I think we ought to be so much more excited than we are. Amen? God is so incredibly good to us, and I just praise His holy name. We have so much for which to be thankful. So let's give God the, the praise He deserves. So thank you for the opportunity to be with you. And, you know, every day I have prayed for years for the Brook Hills Free Methodist Church. I pray for all of the churches. I pray here especially because I see such potential in this place. I've been so excited to see what God has been doing for you and through you, and I'm even more excited for what I believe God wants to do for you and through you. I think there is so much ahead of us that we just really need to get excited about who God is and what He wants to do for His people. Now, I'm not sure, but as the years go by, Brother Ken, thank you again for your excitement, because I've been told as we age, we're supposed to slow down and settle down, huh? I have no intention of doing that. We ought to be more and more excited about who Jesus Christ is. As we live for Him day after day and year after year, we see the miracles of God's grace in our lives. We should be the most excited people on the planet no matter how young or old we are, praise the Lord. I don't know if my job is to cheerlead, but I'm going to do a little bit of it <laughs> while I'm here this morning. And so in the message today, as I was thinking now, you know, we pastors do pray, don't we? Before we bring a message, Lord, what would you have us say to the people? What message would you lay on my heart to share with your servants that will encourage and challenge and build up the church? And the thought came to me that I need to try to help us today to focus forward. I am truly excited about what God has done in the past. Brother Ken and I and some others here. By the way, Ken, are you older than me? Where'd he go? A couple years? Okay. So at least... <laughs> Two or three folks here I know are older than me. Some of us can remember way back when. Amen? Come on, mature ones. We remember back when. Amen? And all we could tell you stories about revivals, about people coming to faith in Christ, about lives that were transformed through the power of Jesus Christ. Isn't it exciting? <laughs> Is God done? Is He tired? Has he run out of energy? I'll confess once in a while I get a little tired. Does God ever get tired? He has so much more he wants to give us. We cannot begin to imagine how incredible our God is. I am so thrilled with what I've seen God do. I've literally watched with my spiritual eyes as people have come to faith in Jesus Christ. I have watched as He sanctified them wholly, filled their spirits. I've watched them get up from an altar of prayer, praising and worshiping God. It's so incredible. But I want you to understand there's so much more God wants to do. And here's my comment. The good old days are ahead of us, not behind us. Come on, church, wake up. You just don't realize how much God wants to do for you and how He wants to use you to reach this entire area and be a part of reaching this world for Jesus Christ. So let's focus forward. Amen? So how good are you at focusing? 
I said, how good are you at focusing? <laughs> okay, I'll confess, once in a while I have a little bit of trouble focusing. How about you? So I'm going to be bringing some scripture here in a moment from uh, <clears throat> the book of Colossians. I'm going to be reading chapter 3, verses 1 to 4. We'll get there in just a moment. But you know, some of us preachers feel the need to teach a little bit before we do the preaching part of it. So here's a quick teaching, and this isn't even in your, your notes, but I often tell people, anytime you crack open the Bible, you should ask yourself the six W's. <laughs> Who, what, where, when, why, and for whom. I'll help you with some of those. Ask who wrote it. Well, you might know it was the Apostle Paul who wrote this letter to who? Well, to the Colossian church, to the people in Colossae. When was it? Probably around A.D. 62. Where was it written from? Probably, um, <clears throat> uh, probably from Rome, perhaps when Paul was in prison. Colossae was in Asia Minor. Today we would call it the nation of Turkey. An interesting fact here is that Paul had never, ever met the Colossians. And I don't have time to go into it, but I think there was a time when Paul was trying to go into the interior, according to the Scripture, to towns and cities like Colossae, and the Lord said, no, you're not going there. Then he saw a man from Macedonia. He went there and to the chief city of Philippi, and hence was born, in my opinion, one of the greatest churches of the New Testament in the Philippians. But the Colossians, somebody else actually planted the church there. Can you imagine? Is that okay that God used someone else? <laughs> I say knock yourself out. Let God bless you and use you <clears throat> to reach other people for Jesus. So in this letter, Paul wants to encourage them. He wants to teach them. He needed to counteract some doctrinal errors. Sometimes people get a little off base. He was especially concerned that they understand the supremacy of Jesus Christ above everything else. And so in this portion of the letter... Paul is attempting to get the Colossians to focus, to focus their attention on proper things. May I suggest, church, we need to do the same. That's a good place for an amen. Yes, thank you. We need to focus on the right things. So let's give it a shot here. You know, here's what I've discovered. It is so easy to get distracted. Would you agree? Huh? Have you ever been praying... And, and you promise you're going to pray. You're praying for the church, praying for the pastor and the team here. You're praying for your family. You're praying for needs. And then does your mind ever wander? Because I'm praying. I'm thinking now, did she say a gallon of bread and a loaf of milk? when I said, <laughs> oh, you know, the, 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 the mind just does things like that, right? It's easy to get distracted. How about when you're reading the Bible? Now, I have gotten to the end of a chapter and said, what did I just read? I, have no, I couldn't remember a thing. It's so embarrassing. So I go back and start over again. It's easy to get distracted. It is hard to stay focused, I think we would agree. All right, let's give it a shot here. Colossians chapter 3. I'm going to read verses 1 through 4, and let's see if we can find some help from the inspired Word of God on how to focus as we should. Here it is. Colossians chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. Since then, you have been raised with Christ... Set your, what? Your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with Him in glory. Well, praise the Lord. Amen? Let me pray for us. Heavenly Father, thank you for the incredible plans you have in store for your people. Thank you for this inspired word. Help us to understand what it says, <clears throat> and especially help us to find the courage to take the truth of your word and apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, four-word focus. By the way, there are sermon notes there in your bulletin. That's kind of neat. If you want to fill in the blanks, do it. If not, tear that part off, fold it into the shape of an airplane. And when your neighbor starts to nod off on me, <laughs> pitch it across the aisle, okay? All right. 
Now, there's an introduction there that says, how good is your eyesight these days? Okay, who's been counting how many times I do this? <laughs> how well do you see the sights around you? In today's message, we will endeavor to determine where our focus should be, and we will do so with the help of the Lord and His inspired Word. So, which way should we be focused? I'm here today to tell you, listen to me, Brook Hills Free Methodist Church, we are to focus forward. We are to look ahead. We are to get excited again. We are to get enthused about who God is, what He has done for us, what He wants to do for us, and the incredible ways in which Almighty God wants to use you. Well, how can it happen? Can we do it if we're half-hearted? Kind of put a little effort into it? <laughs> look at the first point here. Set your hearts on things above. Set your hearts on things above. Verse 1 says, since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above. Why? Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Oh, a church, can you see Jesus? Can you see Him, the risen Lord? And I prayed many times before I got here, and again when I got here, Lord, please don't let them see me. Let them see Jesus in me. <laughs> You know, I love people that when they're nice to me. I, I know I'm, I'm getting old, and I'm getting ugly with every day that passes. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is, and I can't change it. So yesterday I thought, you know, my hair was getting kind of shaggy. I better go get it cut. And there was a special deal at one of these places, and I walk in, and there's all these young ladies cutting hair, and I walked in a little further, and it's all young people. Kids, they look like to me, getting their hair cut. And the one young lady was nice, and she said, well, come over here and sit down. And I looked at her and said, ma'am, do you allow ugly old men in this place? <laughs> and she said, now, that's not nice to say about yourself. Why, you're the best-looking one in here today. I said, child, they trained you good. <laughs> you know, um, sometimes I, I wonder, are we really focusing. I'm thinking, take a look. No, I, you know, my grandkids think I'm, they kiss me all the time. God bless them. I must not be too ugly for them. But take a look. I'm getting old. I'm getting ugly. I cannot change that. But let's focus not on the negative, but on the positive. Look at Christ, Jesus, who is seated at the right hand of God. So why do we set our hearts on things above? Here's why. Your heart is the real you. It's what's inside you, your inner desires, your deepest longings, what you really want. And here again, isn't it so easy to get focused and concerned about the stuff that isn't of eternal importance? Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, we're all human, and we might worry about how to pay the electric bill or about a physical problem or about a people issue, but the Bible says set your hearts on things above. We need to look up, not out to get the encouragement we need. Have you looked at this world recently? <laughs> you got any concerns? I'm not even going to mention politics. Notice how I slid that in there. Do you have any concerns about what's happening in our nation and in our world? It can be downright depressing. We need to focus. What I'm saying, church, is we need to focus on Jesus Christ. He changes our lives and gives us something so good to look into. Focus on Jesus. We look up because He is there, and we need to see more of Jesus and less of this world. We need to focus on who He is and all He has done for us. Is it easy to forget? <laughs> I'm finding it easier as these days go by. It's harder to remember. It's so easy to forget. Do you remember what Jesus did for you? Do you remember that He died on the cross to pay the price for your sins? <clears throat> Do you remember that He rose again in power and victory do you understand that He loves you, that He has compassion, that He has grace, that He has the power to do anything in your life that needs to be done? Do you remember that? Don't forget who Jesus is and what He can and will do as we believe and trust in Jesus Christ. Set your hearts on things above. The real you inside, let it be focused on Jesus. He will draw you to Him, and all of the other stuff will fade in importance. You and I 
need to see Jesus every day and throughout the day. All right. So now that I've said that once, I don't have to emphasize it anymore ever again, right? Let's look at the second point. Then the Bible says, set your minds on things above. Well, I'm like, all right, Paul, you told me once, set my heart, that's the real me. Why does he have to tell me again? Let me ask parents here with younger children. The first time you tell Billy to clean his room, he doesn't like that, right? <clears throat> huh? First time you tell little Susie to help out with the dishes, they're done in five minutes and they're spotless, right? And you're saying, superintendent, what planet are you on, huh? We need, and you know, it's easy to pick on the kids, isn't it? Oh, oh, don't get me started on us adults. Because we know better, don't we? Come on, don't we understand what we're supposed to do as Christians, how we are to live? We shouldn't need to be told again and again, but we do. So the reason Paul says here and repeats it is for the same reasons that we set our hearts on things above. Our minds need some positive encouragement too. And God Almighty knows the powerful influence that the mind has over a person. Years ago, someone said, you are what you think. Actually, the Bible kind of says that too. Let me give you another verse here. Uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, and I call this mind food. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Well, how important is this? <laughs> how important is it to keep our minds focused on things above. But to try to drive home this point, <clears throat> let me tell you a little bit of a secret here about us preachers. Most preachers like to preach. Have you noticed that? And they talk and they talk and they go on and on and on, right? Don't say amen to that one. That was a trick question. But honestly, in almost every message, there are one or two good gems that you need to take home with you. And Lord, forgive us, but a lot of the rest of it you can just toss out, okay? I'm preparing you. Here comes the gem. Now, other than the Scripture itself, here comes the gem I want you to remember from this sermon. We're prepared? I'm going to put it up on the screen here. Every spiritual battle is fought and won or lost where? in the mind. Now, did you catch that? Every spiritual battle <clears throat> is fought and won or lost in the mind. All right, again, some of us mature folks remember back in the dark ages when there was no such thing as uh, color TV, right? <laughs> you had to actually get up and change the channel. I'm sorry, I'm showing my age. And then color came along. Boy, was that fascinating. And I remember some of those old movies, and they colorized them. Can you remember the time when there would be a person sitting there, and they were debating whether they should do something good or something bad? And remember the little imp would pop up on the shoulder? And there was one dressed in a red jumpsuit on this side saying, ah, go ahead and do it. It's not really that bad. Remember that? And on this side was a little angel dressed in white saying, now you know better then to do that, right? And the battle goes on back and forth. As funny as that sounds, it's actually pretty accurate that Brother Ken said I was to preach on sin and tell you I am against it. Is that how we say it in here, West Virginia? I was going to say I'm against it. I'm against it. So we ought to stay away from sin. Are you ever tempted to sin? <laughs> We're in church, people. <laughs> Are you ever tempted to sin? <clears throat> okay. How does the temptation come to you? Listen, Satan does not dress up in a red jumpsuit <laughs> and pop out and say, guess what? I'm going to tempt you today. Oh, no. He uses all kinds of other subtle means to get you to begin to think about doing something you shouldn't do, right? He's pretty smart, too. He will wait for an opportune time to come to you when you're down, you're discouraged, you're upset, you're hungry, you're tired, you're angry with something, you're frustrated with life, and then he'll put a suggestion in your mind, why don't you just do this? Let me illustrate. <laughs> you ever tempted to gossip? <laughs> okay. 
I started in the ministry almost 39 years ago, which is a miracle since I'm only 29. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, my, my, we went to eat yesterday. My granddaughter, nine years old, was with me, and, uh, and her meal was cheaper because she was nine. And I, the young lady looked at me, and I said, I'm 29. And my granddaughter said, times two, Pappy. She's right. <laughs> <laughs> she was right, 58, good good kid, she can do math real well. And so, you know what, this isn't my first rodeo. And so when I say something, have you ever been tempted to sin, I can watch all of you like, oh boy, how did he know, you know. And, and uh, are you ever tempted to gossip? Halos popped up above all of your heads. Oh, no, superintendent, not me. <laughs> Just to say a little something. You know, I, you know, I really care about this person, but... And, and, and I know they're having some struggles in their life, but really, did they have to? And then you just let a little something slip, huh? <laughs> did you notice how quiet it got? <laughs> Message, superintendent, move on to the next point. Set your minds on things above. Why? Because we need to see Jesus, don't we? All the time. He'll keep us straight every morning. I am faithful to do my exercises because I'm old, and I'm trying not to get old too fast. And there is in the room where I exercise at home, there is a big um, plaque up on my wall, and it's a picture of the cross down at Jamonville. I'm from down that way. I know you're from West Virginia. I'm only seven miles north of the Mason-Dixon line, so I'm close. And there's this big cross, and someone gave me a picture of it. And I look at it, and I'm exercising, and it gets harder as the years go by. Amen? But then I look up, and I see the cross, and I think of Jesus, and I think, He didn't give up on me, did He? He didn't stop. He didn't try to make it easy. He didn't try to bypass God's plan for his life. He was faithful to the very end. And frankly, folks, you and I need to be faithful as well. Focus on Jesus, not on earthly things. Why not? Because this earth is a mess, don't you agree? The problems abound all over the place. Do you really want to focus on that? What happens when you focus on earthly things? What happens? You're focusing on the bills. You got any bills? Because if you don't, the rest of us will share. <laughs> huh? Do you have any problems at work? Do you have any uh, people problems? <laughs> uh, move on. Any family issues in your home? Maybe there are some health issues or other situations. What does it do to you when you focus on earthly things? Does it change you at all? Hmm? Uh, does it bring stress into your life? Tension, headaches, can even get you depressed, right? Listen, God understands, doesn't he, who we are, where we are, and all that we're struggling with. The point is this, set your minds on things above. You don't ignore the issues in life, but your focus, your focus is on Jesus Christ who is above. All right, let's see if we get this. First of all, set your hearts on things above. Secondly, set your minds on things above. Third and finally, set your life on things above. Your life. Here's another verse, uh, verse 3. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. You know, I can imagine others looking at the church when we read stuff like this and saying, are you people nuts? Actually, there's a part of me that wants to say, why, yes, I am, and happy in it. <laughs> Yes, I am crazy for Jesus. You just complimented me. You didn't insult me. Yes, I'm crazy for the Lord. The Bible says you died. You died. And now your life is hidden with Christ in God. You died to what? To sin. To the old way of life. To the emptiness. I do remember, even though I'm old, I remember being a teenager and my friends telling me, Oh, Jim, you are missing out on so much. Because I was a Christian. They told me all the fun that I was missing out on, and I thought about that. Ooh, what if I am? <laughs> and then I observed their lives and some of the stuff they did. M may I testify to you today, decades down the road, I am so glad I missed out on a lot in life. Amen? I didn't do the stuff, didn't destroy my family, didn't destroy my body, didn't do anything like that, not because of me, but because of who? Because of Jesus Christ and the changes he's made in my life. So, you've died. Now your life is hidden with Christ in God. Is that radical? Well, praise God. Christianity is radical, isn't it? 
Everything I have does not belong to me, but belongs to Jesus Christ. So let me be philosophical for just a moment. What is life? Why are you here? I'm glad you're here, by the way. <laughs> Why are you here? But what, by that I mean, what are you doing with God's precious gift of life? Where is your life headed? Are you happy with the direction? Is it going? Listen, I have a lot of people that I've reached out to and spoken to recently. Their lives are a mess. They are not happy with the direction it's going. And I want to be careful here because I'm deeply concerned and burdened. But I read my local newspaper just about every day, and my heart sinks when I read the obituary section. Do I have to say a lot more? And they're 22, or they're 35. I'm thinking, you know what I'm saying, don't you? There's stuff going on in our world today. In church, we've got to get out there. We have to reach these people. They have to know there is something better, and the something better is Jesus Christ. Your life is now hidden with Christ in God. He will change you as no one else ever can. Where is your life headed? Well, if you know Jesus as your Savior, you are a Christian, right? A follower of Christ. Your life belongs to Jesus Christ. <laughs> Am I allowed to preach? <laughs> Your life belongs to Jesus Christ, so act like it. I love you. I really do. And listen, I understand the battle and the struggles, and I get upset with myself every day. I never feel at the end of the day that I've done everything the Lord wanted me to do, and I kind of kick myself. But I want to challenge us, folks. If we say we are followers of Christ, let's follow Him. Let's be dedicated and faithful and consistent and live a life that is pleasing to Him. I'm concerned for God's people. We get way too distracted with the material things of life. I'm getting old-fashioned, Lord help me. But I don't see a change in the Scripture, do you? Listen, God knows we're human. Thank the Lord He does. He knows we have needs and responsibilities like everybody else. He knows that we need food and clothes and a place to live and all of that stuff. But we also know that God will take care of all of those things, doesn't He? All right, God is so good. We could, and so many of us here could pop up and say, oh my goodness how God answered this prayer and performed a miracle in our lives. Praise be to God. For those who know Jesus personally, listen, the old life should be gone, right? I mean, listen, my Bible says you died. What does yours say? You died. That life is gone, buried, gotten rid of forever. Now the focus, the focus should be totally transformed. For how long? As long as God gives me breath. As long as He allows me on this planet, it is Jesus Christ who changed my life over 50 years ago, and it is He who sustains me to this very day. I want to serve Him until the day God calls me home. Listen, church, this is not about you. It's not about me. This is all about Jesus Christ and His will for our lives. We've got to understand who He is and His power and His grace and what He wants to do for and through His people. The Bible says, yes, your life is now hidden with Christ in God. You want to be somewhere else? <laughs> i tell you what, I just want to be closer to Jesus Christ. You and I should be living for another world. This earth is just your temporary residence. Come on, let's act like it. You think it's, it's great here. God's blessed us. I appreciate all the Lord has given me and all the fun things I get to do. But listen, when God says it's time to come up, <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes I want to say, St. Peter, beam me up. You know, get me out of here. I want to serve the Lord. I want to help my family. When God says it's done, I'm out of here. Goodbye. See you on the other side. Amen? So let's act like we really believe in Jesus. Now, what if you don't know Jesus? Well, you need to. <laughs> what do you want me to say? I can't lie about that. I'm telling you, I've watched him change people's lives. Even old geezers like me, after decades, he is so fresh, so real in my life. This is incredible. I want everyone to know Jesus. If you don't know him, you need to. And then your focus 
will be on the positive. Then you will receive the power for all of the challenges that you face in life. Come on, church. Isn't it true? Everything you ever need, God will provide for you. Now, here's what, here's what I think you're thinking. <laughs> but Superintendent Jobs, you don't know what I have been through. You don't know what my life is like. You don't know what I've done. You don't realize the mess. I probably don't. So what? Jesus does. <laughs> there is nothing about your life that Jesus Christ cannot in one instant with His divine touch transform your life forever. This is incredible. This is great. And we should be excited. So don't look back. Look ahead. Don't focus on your problems. Focus on Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's focus forward. I want you to hear me, every individual here, and Brook Hills Free Methodist Church, I want you to hear me. I know there are challenges, there are struggles, and it would be easy to focus on that. No. Let us focus forward on Jesus Christ. You cannot begin to imagine what it's going to be like as you believe Him, trust Him, follow Him, and obey Him, He will bless you individually and this church in ways you never dreamed possible. Mm -hmm.